Um, my comments are going to be very technical in nature. Um, and they're on integrating government financial management processes into financial statement frameworks for the sovereign rating agency framework in a more formalistic way rather than qualitative way. So that's my approach. Um, these will be my conclusions, and I'll get back to that in a minute. We looked at, and we look at as part of the process, all four rating agencies. They have different frameworks for those who want to be familiar with them. Like if you had an investment banking advisor or someone, they should, if they're doing their job properly, they should educate you on the four different frameworks. They should indicate how they're different, how they're weighted, what criteria and their objectives are, because yes, they are all similar, but they're also different, as you'll see. And a good advisor to a finance ministry will indicate to you how you customize your presentation for that rating agency. And that's very important. A good advisor will know the frameworks for the different four, and they will assist you in what you're doing. Some of them look at forward-looking statements. Some of them have different weightings. So that's, this is a summary. And for those who are interested, this is kind of an overview right there. And the four are Moody's, for those who don't know Moody's. S&P, Fitch, and DBRS. The two, if you have a limited time, that we would suggest you look at are Moody's and D D uh, DBRS, which happens to be, you know, why they're here. These, from our view, they are the best methodologies. They're well done, they're comprehensive, they're analytical, they're good work products. They really are. What you'll see when you look at this, and it's, it's really interesting, if your advisor's good, he will be educating you on this. You should know this. He will give you the different weightings and considerations at Moody's when you do your presentation, which is how I grew up advising companies before we started buying them. You would go into the rating agencies and you would understand their weighting factors. You have to know them. They may not want you to know them. They may even tell you you don't need to know them. Absolutely not true. Totally, totally not true. You look at the different ones from Moody's, S&P, Fitch, and DBRS. Go to Moody's for a moment. You'll see they look at economic strength, institutional strength, fiscal strength, susceptibility to event risk, and they give different weightings to them. Now, for regulatory purposes now, which has changed a little, like some of them in terms of solvency issues, they really don't want any more lawsuits. And with Graham Dodd, in terms of did they do their work, have they done their analysis, is there potential litigation? They have to potentially sit in depositions. Depositions are not very comfortable. I don't know if you've ever sat in any. I don't think they even have them in Germany. No. They're not very pleasant. It's two to three days we just grill the hell out of you, and you have to just sit there and get beaten up on everything you thought you knew. The times have kind of changed for the rating agencies. So their use of this analysis is very, very important, legitimate, and it's a good process in my view. I think Graham Dodd, some may say they don't like it, but the, 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 the integrity of the process because I am a, obviously a believer in process and rules, because we use rules. DBRS, if you look at them, you'll see they use fiscal management. And look at the weightings. They happen to be the same. You know, debt to liquidity, economic structure and performance, monetary policy, financial stability, balance payments, and political environment. Now, if you go a little further, and this is available, so there is transparency here. This isn't hidden. You can look at Moody's, for example, and then they even give further breakdowns on models, which is very helpful if you're an issuer. You want to know this. It's available. Take your time. Your finance staff must know this like the back of their hand, and they have to know the difference. They should know growth dynamics, scale of economy. Don't force them to get the information. Vincent or Fergus shouldn't have to be furling around calling all different people, not finding timely information. You should have timely information when it comes out with equal transparency, adequate footnotes, and comparable information with disclosures, because you want to show much like you would possibly in Portugal, that you're open, transparent, and it's quality information, and never lie. OK, I mean, this is where we may respectfully have a little disagreements. Don't lie. Don't ever lie. You get caught in a lie, you're going to have problems with transparency, you will lose the trust immediately, and that may also be with your debt numbers. Don't lie. 
Trust is a bond you have to establish with all your relationships, and it is not good at all to begin any relationship based on a lie, whether it's your debt number because you think you need it to get reforms or anything else, don't lie to your rating agencies. Each one, Moody's is really good, DBI, some of them are more detailed. Look at S&Ps, not as qualita quantitative, by the way, so it's a different focus. DBRS, I happen to think, is also very good. Look at the overview of fiscal policy, debt and liquidity, economic structure. This is a really thoughtful process. You can see, when you understand this, a methodology that requires respect for the integrity of the process. It really is there, and if you work it possibly, it will also allow you to better manage your own organization. Understand the process. The tools are here. Use the rules. Use them to your advantage, and it will also help you be a better governance operation. Now, when we reviewed Australia, Canada, France, Israel, New Zealand, Swiss, the Swiss, the UK, and the, and the United States, I think we reviewed, Christopher, like four or five different reports for each one of them looking to see the extent of the disclosure from their audited financial statements. You know, did they talk about the quality of the audit? Did they talk about, in Canada's case, as David Walker yesterday, do you know the U.S. has a qualified audit opinion and has for several years? That's not good. Not good at all. So does Canada. These are real issues. You can't have a qualified audit opinion, especially when the holes are very, very big. Thank you, halfway mark. Um, so we look at them, you really don't find a lot of mention because mostly they get them from, they get what's called statistics. Can you say that word for me? Statistics. Okay, perfect. That's not a finance number. It's a data point that usually comes from the Ministry of Finance or the banks, of the, the central banks. They're not audited financial statements and they don't have extensive comparable footnotes that you can do as an independent party to review. It's very different numbers, they're statistics. Extremely helpful, but from a third party's point of view and actually to manage an organization, you can't. We tried to borrow learn from, I think, Doug Dieters here. The difference on fixed assets and the disclosure without financial statements, you're lost, Doug, you know that. You don't see asset impairments, you don't see depreciation rates, you can't judge average depreciation rates among governments to see if they're being more conservative or more aggressive. You need them. So our proposal here is that, and, and, and now I'll kind of look at the accountant's side as well. There needs to be a credible index, much like um, right here. A number of the rating agencies actually use indexes, okay? Some of them use the World Economic Forum, some of them use the World Bank, and they use the UNDP, they have a rule of law. They use these very helpful indices that um, either Vincent or Fergus, how many countries do you, did you rate when you were at Moody's, the organization when you were at Moody's? How many total? Yeah, sovereigns, just sovereigns, not sub-sovereigns. Oh, it must have been 100, 100, 100 plus. 100, 120-ish? We rate 40. No. 40, you're about 100. That's about 100, my recollection. Okay. Our recommendation to start off with the accountants, whether it's like an IFAC, which I think you're here, or, or a SIPFA, or organization, is there needs to, and I know the World Bank has them, I mean, so there are others, but suggestion is that there is no extensive detailed on auditability, audit quality, process, human capital management. If you don't, they don't have an index, and it has to be, you have to have it for all the countries, right, in order to be usable, because you can't just have it for some. If you don't have the tools and they don't have the tools, then don't be surprised that they're not using the tools because you have to produce the tools. And it gets back to Professor Soule's point, is that if, if there isn't some leadership to give them the information that they want, the, you're not gonna do it. You're not gonna build a, an accounting staff to evaluate the integrity of audits and financial, you can't. It's a full-time job. So, so you need something like this. This goes back then to here, which is uh, this. If they had the quality and it existed, it is possible that there could be a weighting allocation for the index in their weightings as you've seen. But if you don't give them the material, they, where's Ian Ball? They don't have the material to use and they're not gonna do it themselves. 
I mean, our foundation can help, by the way, and it's you know not that large, but it's not insignificant either. It's like you know, hundred, I don't know, two hundred billion or two hundred million, I guess. So it's like we can provide assistance to help, but like you know, I can't give the whole staff, and they're not you're not qualified for it. So they need you know assistance. You have to produce the index. If you can produce it, then they could start looking at things like if you look at you could have qualitative factors similar to the ratings you currently have. This could assist them. They may react as a little revolutionary. And I know Vincent has a 40-year perspective and Jake has like a centuries perspective. We're kind of 100-day plan people. <laughs> like, you know, we are. We look at 100 days. We want to get it done in 100 days. Let's execute it. Get it done now because then we can focus the next 100 days. You could have focused on accounting principles, audit quality, budget policies, financial statement integrity and analysis, fiscal management. You could look at you could look at fiscal oversight. You have some great fiscal oversight with the, uh, you know, your organization, which I think one of the papers you're going to talk about today. You do an analysis of the government's whole government accounts, and it's, it's, it's very well done. It improves each year. It's got better this year. I mean, yes, this happens. And you actually assess human capital, which is extraordinarily important. And then you can do the qualitative factors, some of the ones, two minutes, We've looked at obviously are like the value creation ratio, return on uh, your, your, your assets, dog, which is very important. Your net worth is a percentage. You can have a blend of these, but they're going to need assistance. You can't ask them to do this for all 100 countries. You can't. It's impossible. That's why they do these. So that would be the recommendation. We'd also suggest that this be 20% of the rating factors. And that's our suggestion because we happen to believe it's the most important financial management. Um, so that's kind of our view. Um, we provide some numbers. If anybody wants the slides, they're there. And then um, on the last point, this is my grease point. And I think this kind of follows on with a, with a number of comments that have been made. You need to improve the human capital. And it, yes, it has to start with the first person. It does. It has to start somewhere. There has to be a beginning. And then you look at the downside and the upside of doing in any activity, which you look at, like, you know, what's the downside of raising the VAT taxes 5%? Could be pretty damn significant, right? What's the downside of cutting some pension benefits? Humanitarily, could be very significant, right? What is the downside of hiring a credibly, worldly recognized person to assist you with all these other things and he knows Greece better than anything else? There are people this ad, which some people said we couldn't get anybody to apply. We've had over, what, Chris, 150 applications? Greece, non-Greece, 25 of them are credible, like credible, all pro bono, all pro bono. And as we interview them, credible, not bad. They want the challenge to be able to say they assisted and the turnaround. And there are people that do have that passion. Surprising, and aren't just money grubbers who want to make some more money for their like latest car or watch or something, which obviously disgusts me. And so we ran this ad. Sorry, Jake. <laughs> like, so this is my suggestion. It's human capital. I have nine seconds, seven seconds. Thank you very much. It was very technical. All right. Thank you. <laughs>